welcome to the SaaS Revolution show, uh, Reshma Sahoni, uh, founder at Seacamp. Welcome, Reshma. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Great, great to have you. Uh, you said things weren't going well. I hear you've broken your fast uh, today. I am trying to do this intermittent fasting thing, which is this, what, what is it? Eight hours eating, right? 16 hours off. It's all I can manage. I can never do like a full day. My husband won't let me because I get into a really bad mood. <laughs> So, hangry, hangry so today, I, 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 what's that? Nobody wants a hangry reshma. That's it. <laughs> so today I skipped my breakfast and now I'm just like clearly not able to take it. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I mean, 16 hours is, is, is good. Uh, like humble brags here. I've got to like 23 before cracking, uh, f doing a full day. I mean, I might as well have, if I got to 23, I might as well have gone to 24. But I think I, think I just couldn't take it anymore. Uh, but um, but yeah, um, I'm uh, I've been doing a lot of intermittent fasting. It's very very good, especially for me as I get over thirty to kind of exactly. take the weight. It's, uh, it's a good That's thing. Skip, skip that breakfast. Uh, I'm, I'm part of that club. So Reshma, um, the podcast today is not about intermittent fasting. Uh, <laughs> but um, but first of all, before we get into uh, into it, tell us a little bit about who you are um, and uh, yeah, a little bit about yourself as a as a person. Sure. Um, I'm definitely quite an optimist, especially in these times I've found <laughs> that uh, it's, uh, it's needed. Um, and then I am an immigrant a couple of times over. So originally I was born in India and we, were, we immigrated into America when I was 10. So that was the first time around. And then I came to Europe about, what, 16 years ago from the US. So second time around as well um, in France, actually, to do my MBA and then moved over to, to Germany and then the UK. So, you know, got to see a lot, lot of um, Europe through, through school and also working at Vodafone for a few years. And then, and then Seacamp 13 years ago. So I feel like that, that's, you know, uh, that's been such a big part of life and journey. And then I have had two kids uh, while, at, while being at Seacamp as, as well, seven years old, actually eight years old next week, and then a two and a half year old. Amazing. Well, tell us a bit like about C Camp. What is C Camp? Why did you start it? Yeah. So, I mean, as you can tell, you know, being American, it was a big part of kind of my mindset, especially I think those critical years when you're going to university, a few years of work as, as well. And so it was foundational in terms of thinking about and going through the dot com boom as well as the bust, the foundational kind of around thinking about seeing success at such massive growth and, and scale but yet it being a very US voice around, around that. And so I think working through Vodafone and, and sort of get years of getting involved in, in, in the tech scene, which was very light 13 plus years ago, I you know, had this feeling of there's incredible talent here, but it, doesn't, it exactly doesn't have that global voice and it, and it certainly isn't able to compete with those US players. And so that was the genesis of Seed Camp in that I think there were several of us think thinking, feeling the same way. So, you know, Nicholas Zenstrom sort of uh, starting Atomico at the time from Skype. Um, Saul Klein mainly though, was his, his really his brainchild and he was joining uh, Index from, from Skype as, as well. And he's been a prolific in, investor in his, in his history. So there were, I think there, was, there were like-minded people and we all kind of had the same thoughts around the same time. And, and you know, you had things like TechCrunch Europe starting up as well. You you had sort of future web apps conference. So things were things were starting to happen. Yeah, some pretty uh, uh, pretty great companies have come out of uh, of Seacamp, uh, TransferWise, Revolut, UiPath. Most recently, Hopin. Yes. Uh, been an uh, in investment. So Hopin is powering SaaS dot online conferences and uh, love the uh, uh, the platform, uh, the company, and Johnny uh, uh, as, as well. Um, so tell us a little bit about, because I mean, the, the, these are companies that have come out of, of, over various times, but all yes. gone on. Uh, Hopin is not a unicorn yet, uh, but uh, probably uh, will be at its current growth rate uh, very soon, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but how has your, your, your investment strategy kind of developed uh, in really kind of identifying these companies? And then, you know, how has it changed, you know, over the last sort of 10 years, if, if at all? Yeah, and, and, and it has, but it, it's sort of one sort of significant way, which is I think if you go back to how we started, um, you know, entrepreneurship 
wasn't as much of a known category and there was a lot of education or there was a big knowledge gap basically on uh, on first time founders particularly and versus sort of repeat founders or again their American counterparts. So I would say a lot of our investment strategy um, back in the day and even the kind of founders that were attracted to to Seacamp in the day were very much, you know, that first time very f across the very fragmented parts of, of Europe, but particularly I think looking for a lot more education on how to be entrepreneurs and what it meant and what, you know, what, um, thinking about how to build a business. I think compared to then you know, fast forward um, when Tavit really brought his business through, which was a turning point for us, and then attracting Daniel Dines, attracting um, Johnny as well with Hopin. We think a lot about the economy of Seed Camp. So that there are 400 founders, well, 400 companies, 800 plus founders, and how can we get the best of each other um, towards each other and that knowledge sharing amongst themselves? Um, because often they, you know, they're, they are a mix now, but they're certainly not the same sort of naivete in founding because they spent time now at Spotify, at TransferWise, at, you know, so they've become, they're not, they're still first time entrepreneurs, but they have a lot of scale operating experience. So, so I think it's much less sort of, um, you know, edu sort of education oriented and it's much more driving that, uh, uh, driving that peer based learning. And so I think we look for founders who will capitalize on that, really take advantage of on that. But then in, in a second way, it hasn't changed at all, really, in that we do think of helping build companies that are at least 10, 20 years, you know, that'll be out there if not, if not a century, right? And so we do do think the long term and we think of um, big markets to go after and having some very differentiated, unique, defensible approaches in, with which to do that. And so, so we still, you know, we still look for that in a, in a, in a big way. And I, I, I say a lot of times is, and you know, your conference too is, is venture capital is a pathway. If you get on that highway, it's hard to get off. So you want to be very thoughtful of getting on. And, and we, you know, we, we are very honest with that to say it's not for everyone. And then we are part of that highway. So we're not pretending, you know, uh, not to be either. So we do look for a certain trajectory of business, which is, quote unquote, the unicorn, right? Hopefully profitable ones. <laughs> um, this year, is, you know, it's been very challenging, right? I, I guess uh, uh, for many and, and many of us have to change the way that we, we work. Um, how has your investment process or approach uh, to, you know, engaging with these uh, founders and startups and investing in them changed in light of the, uh, the pandemic? Uh, not too much again uh, either. Um, I think we, we've, we've designed ourselves to live in a hybrid world for quite some time. And it started even, you know, if you take YC as a role model for us at the very beginning of like these applications online, and then you mostly meet founders online until you have sort of a time in London when they when they come present to the, the partners and you're making these sort of fast paced decisions on, on companies to invest in. So, so we, we've known how to operate in that world for a while. And it, you know, it's become that much more on online. So, so really not a dramatic change except I think to say we used to be okay with the, the one or two founders coming to London to present to us and, and kind of you know not touch and feel but you get get my point so that physical you know physical recognition of each other right and so now what we tend to do is really try to get as much of the core team on that zoom call uh, to, so that we really get to know more people validate you know the credibility building and we I think reach out more and more into the network to say do you know so and so how do you know them how do you rate them and, and, and so forth and we see our downstream VCs so the series a VCs C VCs as, as well doing that quite a lot too leaning on us to say okay this is a C camp company how does it rate how you know how have you found working with them and which uh, you know which they've all everyone sort of doubled down on the credibility factor um, process wise yeah not not a dramatic not a dramatic change we've made 20 investments um, completely online since March so made 20 investments online since March I'm guessing that you well we've obviously in the UK we've had a, a sort of brief period where people were starting to get back to normal and now it's starting to go the other way but we know that this is not forever and we, we, we certainly you know we're, we're, we're fairly confident this is not forever in terms of the pandemic being around um but given that you've made 20 investments like online uh you know since that time 
why why go back to in in person if you think could, could this be a more efficient way and people not traveling around and flying in planes to meet founders or founders coming over to, to meet you and just doing things is, is this a more efficient way will this be the future will it remain absolutely i think so um uh, you know, I think uh, Johnny says it best, um, unsurprisingly so. He says the future is hybrid. And uh, I think we are absolutely thinking about how hybrid is that? Um, you know, like a car, is it? How electronic is it? <laughs> and, uh, so, so, so same thing is like, how much do we rely on that? I will say though, you know, there are, even, even during the pitch stages, there are those surprising little tidbits that come out just walking in the hallway together um, from our you know, kind of pitch room to the, to, to the lift or something like that. And it, there, there isn't a shortcut to that and there's no replacement of that. Um, but yes, you know, now not as many of the founders have to fly, right? I think, I think travel in a, in a big way gets, gets impacted and, or even in UK where it takes an hour just across <laughs> from one or London, sorry, one from one part of the city to, to the other. So I think that some of those things will, will change, but that physical, you know, physical kind of being in the same space contact is irreplaceable. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And we're, we're, we're missing that next month with, with SaaS Doc and here because usually we're in Dublin and, you, you know, people go for clients afterwards. Yep. Or, you know, you're walking through the park and you're seeing a conference attendees and you have a quick conversation. That bit's difficult to, uh, to sort of replicate. So while, whilst, you know, it's amazing the tech that we have now, with, you know, uh, like platforms like Popin, which yeah. is recreating some of the key components of online events. Uh, it, some of these things, just you, you know, the dinners, etc., those, those pints, and you know, late in the night, um, difficult to difficult to recreate uh, sort of on, online. Everybody kind of once the event is done, logs off, and the the, the kind of the after party part. Uh, the evening part is is, is missing. Uh, Truly, and I think it's part of human nature to kind of close, right, and then go into what's safe and comfortable. And uh, what we love about the conferences is is the serendipity, the incredible amount of uh, people you meet. But it's also exhausting. <laughs> okay. yeah, definitely, definitely. This is I, I, uh, we, with our first online conference, uh, SaaS Remote, which was actually I mean uh, we we made a bit of a mistake in terms of when we rushed to pivot. We took our template from in person and put it online, uh, and we ended up with uh, 160 speakers, five stages like, across Hopin. There was a bit of overwhelm. There was a lot going on, and then we tried to cater for both Europe and the US. So it was a long event. It was 10 hours per day, but actually, like, so I sat through all 20 hours of the the event, wow. which was like watching my own TV show. It, you know, it was fantastic. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but then at the end, like. I was tired from watching the content, but sort of physically, I, I wasn't exhausted. Like my feet, I'd done zero steps. You know? Totally. Um, and uh, and so, so that was good. So there's some benefits uh, from that, less exhaustion, because everybody comes home from uh, you know, conferences like feeling absolutely knackered and ill and hungover. Um, yeah. but they've had a great time and they've made lots of money and, and so on, and it served its purpose. But I mean, I remember coming back from Slush and you're just in Helsinki Airport and you're just like, oh my God, what a heavy, what a heavy week. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but anyway. I think what you should do is offer people those flights to nowhere, just so they can, as a, as a raffle, a prize or something. I, 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 I would take one because I, I love those sort of moments on the, yeah. you know, on the train or on the plane where actually you can watch a movie. Uh, you you know, can synthesize a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we recently, UiPath, we've got Daniel Dine speaking at, uh, at SAS um, and they're Europe's first Decacorn. I don't know what Decacorn looks like, but uh, I guess UiPath is, is the mythical uh, sort of creature there. But what are your thoughts on the funding environment here in Europe uh, compared with the US? Um, how has that changed in the last decade? Yeah, and and again, the pandemic sort of helps in, in that. Is you know, uh, VCs were to be to be fair, VCs were in, sorry in New York and California were waking up to uh, exactly this immense European talent, and it might not shout as loudly, but actually the fundamentals are pretty fantastic. Is um, and you can see it with Transferize. They they actually just released their year numbers. I think you know a prof a really profitable fintech, right? And uh, and uh, I know UiPath has come out publicly talking about their aims to, to be similar revolutes as, as, as well. So I think um, there's been an appreciation in, in, in US about 
the possibility of that happening and not at small level, but at those sort of multi-billion dollar company type, type of levels. So I think already in the last five to seven years, we've seen that inflow quite, quite a lot. But a um, couple of interesting things, I think the pandemic makes more of them sort of say, well, does it really matter? I'm in Dallas, you know, does it matter if someone's in Latvia or, or Romania or, or Australia? Um, no, right? It's a yeah, sure some time zone difference, of course, that you can again adapt for. But at the end of the day, if people can communicate with each other, that sort of, you know, and their sales and, and the company sales also are impacted in this it positively in the sense that SaaS companies, especially you, you've already been able to sort of sell anywhere at any, any time, but again, at the pandemic, even more so is uh, you can do a lot to, to look very local, right? And, and sell. So I think, again, that's impacting numbers again to the VCs who, who are tracking those numbers to say, well, you can sell from anywhere. We can all be anywhere. You know, we, we welcome looking at the European talent. Um, and then the other thing I think is interesting and we'll see it potentially play out. I think we're seeing a little bit of that is the whole China US conf conflict as such, um, to, uh, you know, trade conflict certainly as, as such and kind of the opportunity for Europe as this neutral ground in a, in a way. And I think again, capital looking this way to say, well, if we can't really invest, you know, uh, here or there, then then Europe's again a pretty pretty great place to to look at. So I think that those two things have uh, have been pretty instrumental just in the last kind of year, even to um, to increase the velocity of of. China, you know, Chinese Asian capital as well as U.S. capital, sort of looking in, and then the other thing we've seen increase of is family offices in Europe. Uh, I think you know much more kind of that again second generation taking over of family offices to say they they themselves are grown up in with tech with, with tech tools, social media tools, um, and then them taking ownership of of their institutions to to want to take kind of some of that risk and take it more directly rather than maybe some of the, um, you know, some of the bankers and, and, and so forth. So definitely a lot of really interesting pools of capital uh, looking at European entrepreneurs. Do, do, you, do you have any advice for European entrepreneurs, uh, maybe first time founders that are looking for seed funding now uh, in, in this climate? Yeah, I think as, as venture capital itself feels competition all, all around, um, you know, at every single stage. And again, in the UK, we've been lucky with or fortunate with policy around SEIS, EIS, and, you know, other countries are copying that as well. There is, there is a lot of a lot of different kinds of capital. So I think my advice is, you know, do your homework. I think you can be picky about the kind of investor you want around the table. There are more specialized firms. There's actually more specialized individuals as, as well, whether they be, you know, gaming angels or e-commerce angels or, 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 or SaaS angels or, or, or whatnot. So, uh, so, so be picky. And I think that shows to the target kind of VC or anyone you're going after that, that you've exactly done that, that homework and then you understand the kind of capital you want to bring around the table and that's attractive to us as investors to say we've well, you know you've come to us for a reason we aren't just like you know oh I was doing an internet search and <laughs> your ad came up right and so uh, so yeah that's probably my biggest piece of advice. Um, we, we, we always end, end the show talking about uh, to, to our guests uh, about sort of mental health and, uh, and well-being but before that I'd like to get your thoughts on the importance of, of mental health and well-being for, for founders or for startup founders because uh, uh, you know pretty pretty challenging to kind of run a business uh, to be part of a startup whether you're the founder or, or not but um, is this something that Seedcamp uh, sort of like thinks about and you know contributes and works with the founders? So. Yeah, no, quite, quite a lot. We've actually invested in a company called Spill. And so that is literally, you know, offering solutions around helping founders themselves, but actually the whole team, you know, manage, uh, manage their mental health and, and, and putting a little bit of that onus on the company itself, right, to, to, to do that. So um, platforms like that or Peppy around uh, women's health, women's, you know, mental well-being, I think not only is it a good thing, I think, I think maybe venture capital through the push of, you know, human consumption, um, we, we see that there's, it's good. And then there's, there's money there to be, to be made as well in, in the sense that companies are spending on such kinds of benefits for, for their, for their team. And, and yes, I mean, I think, you know, particularly in the pandemic, when often founders are already kind of, they're young, 
and whether solo or not, um, they're not in big sort of families, right? Generally, unless unless through the pandemic they decided to go back to to whatever sort of family home or, or home or not, then it's even lonelier. Uh, if you're sticking to the rules and uh, and not seeing people as much. So it's it's definitely an issue that we talk a lot about, think a lot about. Again, we have different chat channels as well, just for the founders to to talk to each other as, as well, so that we're not, you know, we're not involved in that. So uh, so initiatives like that. And, and someone, you know, someone said the, the other day is, it's fine if you if you built a remote company from scratch because all your hiring meant it was a set group of people that were self-selecting themselves into remote culture and what that means around managing that loneliness and you know ma managing not having those water cooler chats or the or the coffee or the drink after right and versus everyone's had to go remote so a lot of those people who enjoy you know being in an office are now forced forced into this so i think that's, that's such a salient thought and uh and again you know we're, we're hoping uh our companies, ourselves, we, we, we talk about it a, a fair bit. And, and then getting back to you, as, as we started with you, then how do you stay uh, sort of healthy and sane? How have you been staying healthy and sane in, in 2020? Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I think probably the biggest thing is not pretending that <laughs> we're, we're great. You know, uh, uh, the VCs tend to tend to do the, I mean, the optimism's there. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so I think it's not pretending that and then probably just taking advantage of um, the weather we have had is, is just be outdoors, just being outdoors as much as possible, get the kids out as as well and, uh, and trying to, you know, um, double down and things that that lead to sort of endorphins versus like dopamine hits, right? Thinking a lot about that is like, okay, feels painful to eat that vegetable versus the chocolate cake, but you know, double down on the on the vegetable. Eat, eat, eat that veg, uh, definitely, definitely. Well, well so, sounds great. And look, Reshma, um, really excited to to see you speak at, at Sastokamia uh, in a couple of weeks, along with there's a number of uh, seed camp companies there. We mentioned Hopin and UI Path and, uh, and some others. Um, uh, so uh, that'll be great. Thank you so much for being uh, such a great guest today on the SAS Revolution Show. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. It's great to be here.